guys, we're out here in the creek thicket. I'm with my buddy Jack. I hunted with him last year a couple times. And uh, we're out here doing the first card pull of the 2017 public land scouting season, I guess. And so we're out here in the creek thicket. We're on the north side where I hung the second trail camera. If you watched the last scouting video for this uh, unit here, I hung a trail camera along this bean field edge here where I found what I thought to be the tracks of the deer I've named Doubles, which is just a giant deer that I was able to get pictures of last year. And I'm pretty sure I had identified his tracks where I hung that trail camera uh, about two and a half weeks ago, almost three weeks. And uh, he has a really distinct footprint and I think it's his. So it'll be interesting going over there and checking that camera. But I also hang it, hung another one that day. And uh, I'm just gonna leave that one for a day. It's a little bit deeper into this uh, unit here and I'd have to cross a creek. Uh, this is kind of a spur of the moment camera check, but I don't wanna go in there and keep messing that spot up. So I, I'm trying to leave that camera sitting there uh, and not go check it for about a month and a half or two months if I can stand the wait that long. But we're gonna come in here and check this one on the north side here, just cause we're not gonna mess anything up walking along this agricultural field edge. And so I'm not worried about it at all uh, going in there and, and checking that cam. So it should be interesting. And I'm expecting to get pictures of some big deer. Oh, yeah. Or hopefully we'll cross our fingers. So we'll get going. Well guys, I said we weren't going to mess anything up by walking along this field edge. We just jumped a, what looked to be a pretty nice buck from what I saw. Um, he ended up, he's right in this little divider of this field here. And it's a really tall grass area. And last time I came in here, I noticed the beds in here. And I almost said something uh, to the camera about it. But I know that this isn't going to be a spot where the bucks are likely to bed during the season. Just because a lot of this cover will be gone and a lot of the hunters will be walking this edge here on this public land and going through this area. So this isn't going to be a bedding area during the season, but apparently there was a pretty nice buck bedded in it just now and he got up maybe 15 yards from us. He let us get really close and then he ended up going out in the field and uh, wasn't able to get on with the camera, but pretty cool nonetheless. He wasn't double, so uh, I'll probably have him on camera. And it's just up here another 50 yards or so. So we're gonna go check that out and see what's on it. I think that's him. See how it's pointed out like that? Mm -hmm. That might be him. I'm pretty sure that's the track that I set this camera up for. And it is right up in there somewhere. All right guys, just got to the camera over my shoulder here. And I'm really excited because uh, I almost couldn't find the camera because it's hidden so well. I really don't think it's going to be stolen when it's way up there in that tree. And even if someone does see it, they're going to have a lot of trouble getting it out and stealing it. So I'm kind of excited that I couldn't find it, but I almost had a panic attack because I thought it was already stolen, which would have been devastating because I'm pretty sure the tracks that I set this camera up for uh, I think they're along this trail again, and I think he walked right in front of it. So I'm going to go up there and get the climbing stick out and check it, see what's on it. Well, the SD card on the camera was completely full, which should be exciting, I guess. It means you got a lot of pictures, but I'm not excited because I kind of feel like something went wrong with the camera, whether it's limbs or maybe it's a bad cam that doesn't work very well. I had one last year that just took pictures constantly. So I'm hoping that didn't happen because then it fills up the card and you don't get pictures of anything but nothing on the cameras. So. A lot of pictures to go through, I guess. About 8,000. Well, the camera took pictures constantly until it filled up the card. 
and so it's going to take forever to download them all and then delete it off the card so I can put it back in there. But I'm going to go up the tree now and see if it's a settings issue or I'm going to try to figure out if it's just the camera's broken and taking a bunch of pictures or if it's just the settings. But kind of disappointing and I don't know if I'm going to wait around for however long it takes to download them all or if I'll head back and come out another day to put the card back in there and test it out again. But I'm going to go check the settings. All right, guys, that's going to conclude this first card pull. It's kind of disappointing, but I'm really glad we came in here because now we know. Obviously, it wouldn't be any benefit to us to stay out of here and for it to not take any pictures um, while we've been gone because it only took pictures the first few days. So I'm glad we came in here to check it and try to get to the bottom of what's going on. And after reviewing all the photos, it looks like I'm pretty sure it's just a sensitivity issue. And I was able to go to the very last picture that I took and it actually stopped doing the constant picture taking. I don't know why it came out of it. I don't know if there was just the windiness and the limbs in front of it were causing it to take pictures all the time. But something made it uh, come out of that uh, deal there. And the very last picture it took was actually a decent buck it looks like. I'll have to look at it more when I get home. But uh, it looked like it stopped taking pictures all the time and now we changed the sensitivity over to low and uh, erased all the pictures that were on the car, put it back in there and we're just going to leave it until I come back in here and check these two cams that I have here again. So uh, probably be a couple more weeks yet and we'll be back in here to see what we have. But kind of disappointing like I said, but I'm glad we came out here to, to figure out what was going on with it. So we'll get out of here. Hey guys. So it's the next day and today we're down here in the river bluff unit and we'll be placing a trail camera down here. Now I've hunted this spot, uh, this unit I should say, several times uh, deer hunting in the late season and a couple times coyote hunting unsuccessfully because I suck at coyote hunting uh, last winter, last fall. And I came in here and did a pretty extensive scouting mission one day uh, when it's late winter when you could see all the tracks and all the trails really well and I got a lot of useful information out of that and uh, combined with deer hunting this place I feel like I have a pretty good understanding of how the deer are using this area and uh, especially how the mature bucks if there are any should be using this area uh, I think I know a lot of the travel routes and a lot of the bedding areas that they should be using at least and so today I'm gonna be coming in here and placing a trail camera to hopefully be able to monitor this whole place and get pictures and get inventory of what's using this area. So I'll be taking you guys along with me and showing you uh, where I'm going to put that camera and why I think it's a good spot. But I also wanted to include this into yesterday's vlog because uh, I didn't really accomplish much yesterday. We didn't get very many uh, good deer pictures at least on that camera because it wasn't working obviously. Uh, just that one grainy buck picture that you can't really tell what it is. I don't think it's devils. Uh, so I didn't really accomplish much yesterday in that vlog uh, besides getting the useful information that the camera wasn't working. And I want to make sure that you know every video that I put up, uh, you guys can take away some sort of value, whether that's entertainment purposes, whether I think it's really entertaining uh, and fun to watch, or whether I think you can get some uh, information out of it and learn something from that video and so I wanted to include this uh, this day into yesterday's vlog and just combine them into one to uh, really mesh more content into this video and I also wanted to talk about a topic that uh, came to mind after yesterday's experience with that trail camera not working and that is how often you should check your trail cameras and if you want a shorter answer for this I don't really have one. Uh, it kind of depends and I think you have to look at each and every one of your trail camera locations on a case-by-case -case basis to decide how often you need to go in there and check the cameras. Because I have arguments for both sides whether you should stay out there uh, like some people say you should stay out of there for a month or you know even longer than that maybe two months three months and really uh, let the area be and don't mess it up by going in there and spooking a lot of game you can ruin an area that uh, maybe doesn't receive pressure if you're going in there all the time 
Uh, the deer might stop using that area or stop using it as they did before. They could change the patterns and you don't want to be messing a hunting area up that you're trying to get information about, uh, you know, even before season when you could be saving that spot for hunting season when you actually should be using the area. So I have arguments for that camp and I also have arguments for the group of people that say you should go in there and check them more frequently. Uh, some people say, you know, even once a week or once every two weeks. And I like to err on the side of once, you know, maybe every two weeks for the more frequent locations. And, you know, really what decides how frequent I should go check my trail cameras for me is basically whether or not I think it'll mess up the area by going into that spot. If you have a location that is a mile back into public land or on your on your uh, hunting farm that the deer never receive any human pressure, you might not want a trail camera there in the first place, but you certainly shouldn't be going in there every week or every two weeks to go check a trail camera. Uh, deer aren't going to be used to people in that area, and so if all of a sudden you're going in there to check trail cameras all the time, you're going to be doing a lot more harm than good, I think. And you could be changing their patterns or making them leave that area altogether. And so obviously it's not going to be beneficial to uh, have a trail camera in that area if you go in all the time and uh, you know spook all the game out before hunting season. So if you have a spot that's really hard to access, like the spot that I killed my big buck in, last fall that was in the same unit I was in yesterday I was only maybe half a mile from that spot and I was already out there already made the drive but I decided not to go in there because I just don't want to go in that spot you know more than once a month or once every two months because I don't want deer to change their patterns it's right next to a big bedding area and I want deer to feel safe down there so uh, I just have to kind of trust that it's a good location I need to stay out of there and let the camera take pictures and hope that the camera is working fine and still taking pictures. Now on the other side of that is in locations that are maybe along an agricultural field or maybe they're along an access road or something where the deer are somewhat used to human pressure. I believe you're going to be uh, better served going in maybe once every two weeks and checking those cameras a little bit more frequently. In that scenario, you really shouldn't be messing up too much of the deer habits by going in there and checking the trail camera, especially if you only go you know, once every two weeks. I really don't think it would hurt uh, anything by going in on that uh, level of frequency, and it might be beneficial for you to do so, so you can avoid uh, like what happened to me yesterday. I got in there and I found that trail camera hadn't been taking pictures uh, for two and a half weeks or however long it was out there. It only took pictures for the first day. And so staying out of that location any longer than I did, which wasn't all that long, it was like two and a half or three weeks or whatever, staying out of there any longer than that wouldn't have been any benefit to me. Uh, I would have just had a trail camera that wasn't working in that spot and I wouldn't have been getting any pictures in that location anyway and so I think in, in areas like that uh, that could be an argument for going in and checking them more frequently is just to make sure that your camera is working right so maybe you go in there uh, a week after you first set it in those easy to access locations or two weeks after you first set it uh, something like I did and you check it make sure it's working right get all the pictures off of it uh, make any adjustments that you think you need to make then you back out and then you let another two weeks go by. At the end of that two weeks, you go back in, you uh, check the trail camera, and at that point, if it's been out there for about a month, you should have a good inventory of what's in that area and you should be able to know what deer are using that area and whether or not there's anything that you wanna hunt uh, using that particular spot that the camera's in. And that's if it's in a good location. So you either have good pictures of deer and have what you're looking for or you don't and I think if you've left a camera in a spot for about a month you should have a good idea of what's using and what's coming in front of that camera so you know if you're getting good pictures you can leave it there but if you're not I'd say it's time to move the camera and so 
if you would have stayed out any longer than you did and you know two months leaving the camera in the same location you'd have still probably had nothing spectacular on the camera and you you could have possibly uh, wished that you moved the camera earlier than you did because I think you need to keep your trail cameras mobile in those easy to access locations so that's basically my thoughts on that is if you have a really hard location to access uh, stay out of there you know definitely not more than once a month I try to stay out of there as long as you can bear it um, and even that is kind of a case-by-case -case basis if you can get in there and you don't think you're gonna bump deer and then maybe you just have uh, a bunch of thunderstorms coming in right after you go in there and it should wash away most of your ground scent I think it's a lot more safe going in there right before that thunderstorm if you don't think you're gonna bump deer you can go in there and not have to worry about it too much because all your ground scent is gonna be washed away anyway uh, that's gonna be a lot safer than you know going in there on a bright sunny day where you have several days after that where there's no rain and you know uh, there's gonna be deer moving through that area they're gonna be smelling where you were and so you know even that depends uh, on the weather conditions and everything like that but I believe in general you should stay out of those locations that are hard to access a little bit longer than you should your locations that are along these access roads or along agricultural fields. So hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea of my thoughts on how frequently you should go check your trail cameras and hopefully that gets you thinking about how often you should go check yours and you'll just have to use your best judgment with that. But anyway, I got about a mile, a little over a mile hike in here to the location that I want to hang my trail camera, so better get going. So I just got done hanging this trail camera and I think it's on the main trail uh, that leads to and from the bedding which is deeper back here in this marsh, at least I think it is, and the food which is in the river bluff, the hardwoods, and then it goes up and over into an ag field uh, a little farther north, um, not too far away. So I think that's the food and that's the bedding and I think this is the main travel route that connects the two. And we have a big Oxville Lake about 50 yards that uh, kind of necks down and and gets closer to us about 50 yards away to my left here and then to my right we have several smaller uh, bodies of water that just kind of branch out and fan out and they all kind of end about 50 yards to my right uh, over there so it creates kind of like a hundred yard pinch where if the deer doesn't want to get wet they have to walk through this area and they don't mind getting wet that much. I'm sure some deer uh, cross a lot of those waters up there that are smaller, so it's not like an end-all deterrent. Uh, that they'll have to probably swim in. It's not a river, but it's a backwater, and they'll have to probably swim in that. So they'll probably avoid that, but I'm hoping that at least most of the deer movement gets pinched down to the, within this 100-yard uh, spot right here, this funnel, and there's about three heavy trails that go through this, and I'm hoping that I have it on the right one, but I think this is the heaviest one. So we'll just have to stay out of here and we'll have to come back and check it. I'll probably wait at least a month uh, for this one. This one's definitely harder to access and you have to disrupt a lot of this area. So probably stay out of here at least a month. Um, you know, just time commitment wise. I, I don't think I'll have time to come back in here within the next month because I have a lot of other ones to check. I still have one more to put out on a different unit. But I'll stay out here for at least a month, uh, probably a month and a half, and then I'll come back in here and see what's used in this bedding area back here and, and uh, what time they're coming through. So hopefully I can get uh, some more information on them so I can hunt them better this fall. So we'll have to wait and see, but time to get out of here now. I have a bunch of rain moving in uh, really soon here, so I need to get back to my truck and uh, go home. But I wanted to hang it this morning before this big rainstorm here so it'll hopefully wash away a lot of my ground scent. Which I don't know 100% if it actually does, but uh, I think it should minimize some of it. I know deer smell better 
when their noses are wet and this was actually pointed out in the comment section on one of my vlogs from last fall I was talking about ground scent and rain and my thoughts on that and someone pointed out that they smell better when their noses are wet and I've heard that too I've heard that with dogs and a lot of other uh, things that have really good uh, smelling senses so that is an argument that the rain would only um, accentuate your smell that you leave behind in the particular area that you went but I still have a theory that if you get a big rain that moves in after you leave the area and it's really a goalie washer that it'll wash most of your scent away at least that's what I'm hoping so that's the hope for later today is a big heavy rain once I get home and uh, we're gonna get out of here and let let the trail camera do the scouting for us so we'll get going <laughs> 